Now we move to an I-Team investigation tonight, which found nearly 2,000 drivers every year all across the U.S. are hit by a train mm -hmm. of all things. And while several factors we know would contribute to these kind of collisions, mm -hmm. right? It does include human error. Crossing gates do play a crucial role in preventing these kind of accidents. Our CBS News Texas I-Team investigation actually found that those safety gates you mentioned are missing from more than 3,000 train crossings all across our state. Investigative reporter Brian New joining us now. Brian, I know that you found that even after these fatal crashes have happened, it can take years to get a gate put up at a crossing. Yeah, if one is put up at all. We began investigating this five years ago after a 13-year-old boy was killed when his school bus collided with the train. Years later, we find ourselves asking many of the same questions, including why wasn't there a gate at that crossing or at this one? in the middle of Dallas. They are simple and effective. I would have stopped for a gate. When a train approaches a crossing, gates create a physical barrier between cars and a moving train. By and large, uh, gates are effective. But a CBS News Texas I-Team investigation found this safety feature is absent from thousands of Texas train crossings. Where were the arms? Where were the arms? Including at crossings with a long history of collisions. You worry about that car? Yes, it didn't stop. When Eva Lee sees a car drive down Cream Level Road in Athens, she says she has a flashback to 12 years ago. I went across the tracks like I normally do, and I heard a whoosh, and then it hit me. I broke like 14 or 15 ribs and uh, punctured my lung, and I still have a lot of nerve damage and all from it. Fast forward seven years. Damn, that's oh. crazy. This time at the same Athens crossing, a train smashed into a school bus. First responders saved the driver and a nine-year-old girl. But there was nothing they could do to save 13-year-old Christopher Benia. Why isn't there an arm there? Let me first say that uh, our deepest condolences go out to the family of uh, Christopher Benia. Shortly after the 2019 deadly train collision with the school bus, the I-Team sat down with the executive director of TxDOT. Mark Williams told us the state was working to improve the safety at the Athens crossing. Is it fast enough? Certainly not for, for those families, but we are making progress. It's been five years since that interview, five years since Benia was killed, 12 years since Lee was hit, and a railroad and yield sign still remain the only safety features at the crossing. I don't understand why they hadn't done nothing. Last year, two more vehicles were hit by trains at this crossing. So we went back to Austin. We're in the process of working out some of the final agreements with Union Pacific. William said shortly after the deadly school bus crash, TxDOT proposed closing Cream Level Road, effectively eliminating the train crossing altogether. But last fall, the city of Athens, which owns the road, said closing it would cause other safety hazards and thus rejected this proposal. So now TxDOT is moving forward with a plan to add lights and a gate. Installation is expected to begin later this year. We want to see these projects move faster, but we've got a really significant need when it comes to highway safety all across the state. Statewide, there are more than 3,000 gateless train crossings. TxDOT says it would cost more than a billion dollars to install gates and lights at every one of them. At the current funding level, that would take nearly 200 years. In the past five years, TxDOT has installed gates at 21 crossings. Some may look at that and say, it really doesn't feel like TxDOT is putting a, a dent in the problem. Yeah, well, we certainly would like to be seeing more investment take place in that. And thanks to some of the additional funding that we have seen, we expect to have about 35 gates installed over the next two years. But we also have to look at the bigger context, the bigger picture. That bigger picture, William says, is the fact that out of the more than 4,000 fatalities on Texas roads every year, on average, less than 20 occur at train crossings. Therefore, safety projects need to be prioritized. But the I-Team found even at crossings where drivers have been killed, it is not unusual for it to take years for gates to be installed. It took six years after Carol Bryant was killed at this crossing in Johnson County before gates were installed. It took eight years for gates to be added in Godley after Don Baber was killed by a train. 
And then there's this crossing just south of Love Field in Dallas on Cedar Springs Road. If I'd have slammed on the initial, I probably would have made it. In 2017, Sean Ball was driving home from work at night. It's pitch black. When he was hit in the crossing by a train. I thought, well, this is how I'm going to die. Um, I'm going to die by being crushed in between two trains. But while Ball walked away with no major injuries, he told us shortly after the crash, without gates being added, he worried about the next driver. I emailed the city. Um, let them know about it, said I was lucky, but somebody at some point in time is not going to be lucky. In July, 49-year-old Jonathan Frank Harris became the 11th driver since 2012 to collide with the train at this Dallas crossing and the first to be killed. Gates have benefits, certainly they do, but they aren't the cure-all, they aren't the end-all. There's a motorist responsibility as well that comes into all of these. But gates are important safety features, and we want to see those continue to be installed as quickly as we can. So last year, after Harris was killed, these overhead warning lights were installed. Doug Nicole, the original plan also called for a safety gate, but TxDOT says in the railroad right away, there simply wasn't enough room for both gates and the lights. Mm. So, so whether it's this crossing that you're at right now, obviously, or any of the thousands of others that you point out across the state, is it the decision to add gates uh, solely for TxDOT to make? Is it only their decision? Yeah, so it is TxDOT's decision, but it's a little more layered than that. TxDOT typically funds these gates. The railroad company, which owns the right of way, they're in charge of installing them. And in this case right here, Cedar Springs Road, this is a city road, so the city of Dallas is involved in this case. TxDOT did tell me that the decision to go with these overhead lights and not a gate was a collaborative decision from all three. And like you mentioned, we have so many of these across the state, so I'm wondering how much does it cost to put a gate up? Yeah, Texas says it costs around $300,000 to design and install gates. And Nicole, that cost is going up. So TxDOT says that they are concerned that they may not be able to install as many gates as they had hoped because of that rising cost. I mean, that is an important thing to know. Doug and I literally just looked at each other, yeah. shocked at that number. 300,000 for Gates. Mm. There's, there's way more involved in there than yeah. we've got time for at the moment. But yeah. Brian, maybe that's a part two. We appreciate the insight tonight. Mm. Brian New and the I-Team, hard at work for all of us.